by Sigismund's horde. Look out. What the? Look what I've got for you. You'll love this.
My respects to you. Can I ask... What kind of a lord is Sir Hanush? I can't complain. He knows how to keep order, but he does it with good humor. What do you think of Sir Radzig? I hear he's on good terms with the king. Probably why Sir Hanush opened the door to him. Sir Radzig seems like a fair man, and folks say he's a good governor. What's young Lord Capon like? He'll be the governor here in a few years. Sir Hanush is just his guardian until he comes of age. The young lord spends most of his time making merry. But he'll grow out of it. He's no fool. What's life like in Ratai? Till Sigismund came, and then you folk, it was a fine, peaceful life here. What will become of the Scalitz refugees? I'd like to know the answer to that myself. I hope things can settle down quick, and you lot can clear off. Perkstein is a fine castle. It'll be even finer once you all clear out, and I can move back into my chambers. Do you know who those soldiers of Sigismund's are, Captain? They call them Cumans or Kipchaks. Our lord says they fled from the Mongols to Hungary and settled there. They're herdsmen and excellent horsemen. And barbarians, too. For all that they claim they've turned to Christ. Thank you. That's all I wanted to know. I'm here for training. Yes, you're that boy Sir Radzik sent. Yes, that's me. Let's get to it then, if that's what Sir Radzig wishes. Uh, and because you've never held a sword in your hand before, we'll start with something simpler. Very well. Come with me and listen closely. I don't want to be repeating myself. Farewell. Go and see what you're made of. Hold it properly and keep moving. Never stand still when your life depends on it. Right, good. Now, try attacking. You've got to put your back into a good slash. No use waving the sword around like you're swatting flies. Go into the attack with your whole body. Try slashing from various sides to get used to it. Very good. Well done. Good. All right. All right. That pointy tip isn't for decoration. Try stabbing me with it a few times. Good. Not bad. All right. That will do. Slashing, stabbing, and movement are the foundations that you build everything else on. Now, let's try something more complicated. One strike, I can simply fend off. You mustn't give your opponent time to react. String your strikes together. As soon as you finish one, begin another. Strike, strike, strike. Yeah! Not bad. Good. Well done. Now let's see how you do with defense. It's not hard to block a basic strike. Just watch out and move your sword into the path of the blow. Like that. Very good. Well done. Well done. Very well then. Let's see what you're made of, lad. Come at me and don't hold back. Ow. See, I lure you, then attack unexpectedly. Good strike. Ugh! 
Fine. That's enough. I have my work cut out, it seems. That's life. Let's try something more advanced. When in combat, keep an eye on the space between you and your opponent. That is your space. Try to attack from the side the opponent will find harder to block in time. If I'm holding the sword raised up, do an uppercut. If my sword is low, lunge. Let's try it. You strike a few times at the side where I'm not holding my sword. Nice. Very good. Nice. All right. Well done. Right, lesson two. Everything you've learned about blocking is wrong. When I cover, I can simply fend off your blows with my sword and gain control of the space between us. But it's better not to control just the space, but actually your opponent's weapon. Attack, and I'll show you. All right, that will do. Now you. The trick is to stay in your stance. As soon as I start to attack, you block. Boop knocks the blade aside. Ah. No, not like that. You mustn't hold a sword there. You have to move along with the attack. Again. Ow. Well done. Well done. Well done. Ow. Too soon again. Ow. All right. Try and catch the rhythm. You see the sword move, you move at the same time and deflect it. Not bad. Right, now we'll try it a little faster. Concentrate and block just at the moment I start attacking. I'll strike you from above each time so you can see it well. Well done. Nice! Ow. Not like that! Ugh. Good! Very good! Ow. Not like that! That. Good, good. Now let's try it at full speed. You probably won't succeed, but that's normal at the start. You must train. Let's go. Ow. 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 Captain Vidal! Uh. Wait a while, Henry. Greetings, Sir Hans. What brings you here? I was on my way when I noticed that you're entertaining Sir Radzik's esteemed guest. Not the same as holding a hammer, is it, blacksmith? It's Sir Radzik's orders. I know. I'm actually here to train at the archery range. My hand's grown heavy lately. You don't mind, do you, Bernard? Not at all, my lord. Good day to you, blacksmith's boy. Try not to hurt yourself. Where did we finish? Yeah, leading the opponent where you want him. There's one more way to evade a strike. You simply step aside, attack, and I'll show you. All right, try it. It's important not to move too soon. 
I'll see where you're going and hit you. If the same will happen if you move too late. I'll attack slowly now. As you see me, raise the weapon, jump us off. You'll throw the opponent off a bit, and there's your chance. No! Not like that! Very good! Very good! Not bad. Fine. Now try it a little quicker. Try to get used to the rhythm. Never take your eyes off your opponent. You'll see a strike before it's even properly started. Not bad. Nice. Nice. And the last thing for today, a trick. You raise the sword to force your opponent to block. But then, change the direction of the attack at the last moment, and the opponent won't even know what hit him. Try it. Draw back the weapon, then change the attack zone and strike, so I don't have time to react. Too bad. Maybe we'll make a soldier of you after all. But don't get cocky. You have to train hard and persistently. You might have talent, but talent alone won't do. Practice. Whenever you've got nothing better to do and you're in the mood for it, you can come and train here with me. I can teach you something more when you're up to it. Don't leave yet. Sir Radzik also wanted me to teach you archery. My home, my family, my livelihood, be merciful, good people. Let's see then. Take this bow, go and stand in position over there, and we can start. And another thing, put on this arm guard. 
Without it, you could flay your forearm with a bowstring, so be sure to wear it. Thank you, Captain. Save the thanks, and get in position. Now concentrate. A bow ain't exactly the weapon of choice of a knight, but it can come in very handy. You've got two bandits coming at you from a distance. You shoot one in the eye, drop your bow, and draw your sword on the other. Emperor Charles, God rest him, encouraged his subjects to learn archery. He even organized contests in Prague. But you wouldn't have gotten far there. You're holding the thing like a piece of firewood. But enough talk. There's the target. Try and hit it. Draw the bow, aim, and release. Try to get a feel for the rhythm. Inhale on the draw. Hold your breath for a moment, and then release the string. No jerky movements. Just let the string slide out of your fingers, as if you were about to draw it back more. It's all one movement. The arrow aiming at the target and flying at it. Shoot away. What you have there is a training bow. The arrow drops quickly. Once you've trained a bit, you can get yourself a better one, and then those arrows will fly so fast you won't see them. Don't forget the arm guard. Once you've mastered the bow a bit, you won't need it anymore. That flew nicely. Practice for a while, and no nonsense. Well, that was awful. I didn't imagine a village yokel like you would have much skill, but you failed to meet even my low expectations. I don't know why you're wasting your time, Sir Bernard. Nothing will come of him anyway, and at the first sign of trouble, he'll run away like any other cowardly peasant. After all, he's done it before. What did you say? Calm down, boy. Keep in mind who you're talking to. A braggart who was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. Now you've really done it. You'll go to the stocks for that. Calm yourself, Sir Bernard. If the blacksmith boy feels he can prove himself, then let him try. Do you think you can beat me? Well? Any time. Very well. If you defeat me, I'll give you my bow. If you lose, you'll have to pay up. Do you even have any coin? I don't have enough. Then you'll owe me or work it off. Let's get to it. I didn't expect that. Probably just wasn't your day, sir. I told you I have a heavy hand, ever since I fell off that horse during the last hunt. What are you grinning about, boy? I think you owe me a little payback. How about a sword fight at the arena? If you like. Sir Hans, is this necessary? Sir Hanish has already had words about you fighting with your subjects. He explicitly told me. I know what he told you. You can just tell him I didn't listen to you. So what's it going to be, blacksmith? If we must. Excellent. Then let's go. Lost your balls. Take that.
Even then, it looks like I get to keep my bow and you your Groshen. I suppose I should give you credit for taking on my challenge, despite your limitations. Thank you, sir. Godspeed, Blacksmith. And don't worry, this isn't the last time we'll meet. We'll have more fun like this again soon. Don't fret about it, lad. Lord Capon is a good swordsman, and if by some fluke you actually won, well, you might not take it so well. Now go to the rat house. The bailiff's waiting for you there. All right, Captain. <laughs>
garlic, carrots, beetroot, onions, all that grows in the ground. Fresh. Come right up. God be with you. What kind of governor is Sir Hanush? Young Sir Hans is our governor, but Sir Hanush is his guardian till he comes of age. That's not a day I'm looking forward to. How do the Ratai folk get on with the refugees? I know they got nowhere to go. Scalitz is a pile of ashes and the countryside ain't safe, but they've been here too long. Some of those buggers got light fingers, and not a one of them appreciates the sacrifices we made for them. Have you heard anything about the Cumans in Sigismund's army? Everywhere they go, they pillage, rape, and slaughter. Or so the tales have it. Of course, all armies do that, but them barbarians take pleasure in it. Master Bailiff, is there anything of interest going on here? Nothing of interest to me, thank Christ. I'm to put myself under the Bailiff's command. Ah, so you're the young man Sir Radzig appointed? Yes. Very well. Sir Radzig asked me to test you a little, and as it happens, you've come at the right time. We've a few disputes to settle. It seems some of your former neighbors have been acting quite inappropriately. I was hoping having one of their own on the town watch might help sort things out. I'm not sure. I'm just a boy from a forge. Not anymore, lad. Now you're a part of Sir Radzig's retinue. That brings responsibilities. Have you been to see Captain Bernard? I have, and I have the bruises to prove it. The captain doesn't hold back. The harder the training, the easier the battle. Well, anyway, you're going to assist my town guard. Come to the church in the afternoon. Yaroslav the watchman, Nightingale they call him, will wait for you there. He'll show you around the town and teach you a little about keeping the peace. And you need to stop by the armory to pick up some gear. Yes, bailiff. God be with you. What am I to do? Oh. Could do with a bite to eat.
I was told to pick up a kit here. Name? Henry. And? In fealty to? Sir Radzik Kobola. Hmm, yes. I've got you. Well, come on in then. Make yourself at home, Henry. If my memory serves me, you're entitled to a helmet, a gamberson, and a club. That's all? You want a kiss and a hug as well? I mean equipment. It's quite enough for patrolling the town. You're there to stop trouble, not start it. My respects to you. Good day to God be with you. Do you need anything? Take care. I'm Scarlet and I lost Well, you're a sight for sore eyes. I'd like to know... What do you think of the Lord here, Sir Hanush? He comes from the glorious line of the Lords of Lypa. Folks say he's a bit hot-headed, but he took us in, so he must be a good Christian. Who's this Sir Hans Capon? He's actually the real Lord of Rattay, and Sir Hanush is only his guardian, because Sir Hans is underage and his father is dead. 
Folks say he's a spoilt young pup with an eye for the lasses. That's all. God be with you. What can I do for you? May the Lord watch over you.
Good day to you. Good luck to you. Yeah. Not tonight. My cousin is visiting. All right. Tomorrow night. Make sure you have some fun. Oh, all right then. Come over after. morning. Goodbye. Do something about the price. Why not? What about this? Well, a little more, and we'll call it a deal. That's a sum I can live with. Look what I've got for you. You'll love this.
Good morning. What could do with a bite to eat? I'd like to discuss the price. Sure, why not? Agree? Well, a little more and we'll call it a deal. Aye, for that amount, I can be persuaded. God be with you. Sorry to interrupt, but it sounded like you might need some help with something. What? No, nothing. What did you hear? That you might have hidden... You heard wrong. There's nothing hidden anywhere. And you leave my man alone. Understand? As you wish. Goodbye. Good day to you. What do you need? Good luck, then. I'd like to discuss the price. Sure, why not? What do you say to this? I'd almost shake on that. Almost. Aye. For that amount, I can be persuaded. Thank <laughs> you. 
Good day to you. Do you know if there's anyone around here who could use my help? Aye, there could be something for you. Sir Anish is convening the Ratoy tourney again at the Upper Castle. It's always a great occasion with jewels all day long. You can still enroll now, if you think you're good enough. And that's not all. We're told our local gamekeeper was looking for help with something a while back. Why don't you ask him if he still needs help? I'll be with you. Good day to you. What do you need? May the Lord watch over you. Let's have a word about the price. Aye. What do you say to this? Come now, just a little more and we have a deal. I knew we'd come to an arrangement. Jesus Christ be praised. Any work for me here by any chance? That depends. How's your hearing? What? I said, how's your hearing? It's perfectly fine. You don't have to scream at me. I mean, why are you asking? Because there is this one little job going. But I need someone who knows the area well and has good ears. I ought to be able to handle that. Fine. So here's the problem. My friend is a birder, and he left a few rare nightingales with me for safekeeping. They're good to trade. Rich gentlemen hang them caged up in their chambers. It keeps their wives from fretting when they're off drinking and wenching. I see. The trouble is, the nightingales are gone. I don't know how, but the birds have flown. Hang on, surely you're not asking me to go flapping around looking for birds? Not exactly. Luckily, their wings are clipped, so they won't be far, and the watchman in the tower told me they headed off toward Vranik. I have traps prepared. It should be easy enough to catch them in those. Fine, but how will I know where to put the traps? I hear they like pine woods, and there's a pine-covered hill just before Vranik. Right. A bloody great wood. That's just why you need to listen out. Nightingales have a distinctive song. When you hear it close by, you set a trap on the spot. They kept twittering away the whole time they were here, so I can remember the tunes. 
I'll sing them to you. I can't wait. It went something like this. What? People keep birds like that in their houses. It's like the sound a cat makes when you pull it by the tail. You know how it is. The gentry's got all manner of odd tastes. The question is, can you remember it? Yes, I'll remember. Right, here are the traps. Don't forget, once you hear a nightingale, set a trap nearby. You ought to be caught in it after a while. I'll do that. God be with you. Good health to you. Trouble at home? You overheard us, did you? She's a good woman. Normally we don't quarrel, but things have been hard on us these days. And is there some way I could help you? I'm credibility itself. I'm sorry, Henry, but my wife would kill me if I told everyone who passed by. God be with you. Garlic soup for the winter, onion soup for the spring. Asparagus for taste and brew for what ails you. Asparagus that'll cut you in half and cucumbers that'll cure what ails you. Jesus! What is it you want here? I was afraid something might have happened to you in the attack on Scarlet's. Ah, oh, now, what would happen to me? I can look after myself. Always the jester, aren't you? A very fine, very brave jester, which everyone would have seen had I not been trading in Sassau at that time. So I was worrying about you for nothing? Not at all. I'm glad you worry about me. It shows you care. Why don't I come and see you tonight? And you can show me how much you love <laughs> You rogue. Not tonight, my cousin. Everyone see him disgraced. Thank you. 
thank you a hundredfold. And what you know, Fred Beach, just this morning, Fred. God be with you. May the Lord watch over you. Let's have a word about the price. Sure, why not? Agree? That's not enough. Tough luck. I'd like to discuss the price. Aye. Is this enough? Come now, just a little more and we have a deal. Since it's you... Well, now, a little more and we'll shake on it. I'll go for that.
down. Are you looking for me? God be with you. God be with you. God be with you. Good luck to you. I made the songs of all the faithful. What's life like in Ratai? We got sturdy walls and two castles to protect us. There's not many towns have that. And we got everything we need here. We got an apothecary, a swordsmith, an armorer. We got a beautiful church and fine alehouses. Take care now. Here I am. My name is Henry. We're supposed to go on patrol together? You're too early. We'll meet in the afternoon down by the church. All right. I see you're kitted out. Ready to get going. I'm Nightingale. Aren't you that lad the mill wench brought here on a cart? Teresa. Yes, she rescued me. She turned up with Captain Robot and his knights. All honor to the girl. She has bigger balls than most men. Tell me, how did you pay her back? Well, I, um... I thanked her. That's not much, is it? You should go and see her when you get a chance. So, how did you end up in the service of the bailiff? I don't want to be kicking around in the dirt while other men do honest work. You're an eager one, aren't you? Come with me, Henry. 
We'll patrol the town and then check on the taverns to make sure they lock up in the evening. I'm ready. Don't forget, I'm supposed to try you out and, with the help of God, teach you something. So I expect you to deal with any misconduct yourself. I'll make sure you don't do anything too stupid. Let's go. This is our church, St. Matthew's. It serves not only as the house of God, but as the crypt of the Lords of Lypa, our masters. The gravedigger lives right round the corner. The priest, too. Our parish priest. Ah, a man shouldn't speak ill about servants of the Lord. This is our rat house. Pretty big, eh? The bailiff and his hands live there, and our maestro proto notarius, the scribe. And the jailhouse. You don't want to see the inside, not even as a guard. Naturally, we have an executioner too, but he doesn't live in town. That wouldn't be proper, as I'm sure you know. He lives by Gallows Hill, the other side of the creek. This pillory was brand new in autumn, and two people have already been rotting on it. The swordsmith lives here. What the hell is going on here now? Go and check it out, Henry. What are you two screeching about? Stop making such a ruckus. About time you turned up. This filthy beggar thinks. My name is Jane. No one cares what your name is. This filthy beggar thinks she can come and stink in front of my shop. I want you to get rid of her. What's the problem here? This is my shop, and I won't have beggars sitting on my doorstep. Let her go and squat in the square. She won't be in anyone's way there, and there's plenty of folk to beg from. Must you sit here, of all places? Yes, I do. Why? Folk drive me away wherever I sit. I can't keep walking all day and night. Can't you show us some Christian charity, Armour? What? Have you any idea how much I've given away in alms, even to this witch only yesterday? Is that true? Might be. Might not. Did you get any arms or not? Yes. From the armourer here? I don't know. And even if I did, that was yesterday, and my belly's empty again today. That's true. What would you know about it? I think you ought to give Jane something. I gave her a groggion yesterday, and today she's ruining my business. Have you taken leave of your senses? Why should I give her anything? Well, you wouldn't want to look like a heartless bastard in front of the whole town, would you? No, certainly not. There you go, then. Just a coin or two, and you'll have an even better name. Oh, for God's sake. Here you are. And don't come back. Thank you. See now? It didn't hurt too much. He'll hate you now, that I can tell you. But you acted like a good Christian. Your old neighbours are living here now. It's a bit of a shithole. Even so, you should be thankful to Zahanush. If the town burghers got their way, your folk wouldn't be led anywhere near the town. And now our people aren't too happy with him. Some fools are even calling for Sahanush to finally hand the fiefdom over to the young lord, Sir Hans Capon. Sir Hans's father, old Sir Yeshke, may God rest his soul, kept it till he was an old man. 
Then he retired from it. First to Moravia, then to eternity. Sir Hanush is managing the fiefdom until Sir Hans comes of age. They're related by blood somehow. The same great-great-grandfather or some such. The time's coming soon enough when the estates have to be handed over. These affairs often end in conflict. I hope we have nothing like that here. This square here, it looks much better during the markets. Then it's filled to bursting with folk from all around. We've also got the baker's shop here and that mad merchant Wolfram Pruder. Pruder has a pretty daughter, but he keeps her on a short reign, which the young bucks are none too happy about. I heard he even keeps the poor lass locked up at home all day. There's one alehouse here on the market square, the trader's tavern. The other's up by the gate. We'll be going there later. belong to the inner bailey. Here's the forge. The blacksmith has some trouble and he's not working at the moment, but his apprentice is standing in for him tolerably. I hear you're a blacksmith's apprentice too. You lot could help if needed, couldn't you? Us? What do you mean? You and your master, or your father, whoever taught you. The... What is it, lad? My father was the master blacksmith. He was killed in Scullets. Ah, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Thank you. So am I. My papa died not long ago. Of course, it was old age got him. That's not the same, but I know a little how you feel. Rate fiefdom is pretty big. Naturally, it starts here by the town and continues along the Sasau River all the way to Kohelnitz. Then there's Gallows Hill, lots of farmhouses scattered around. Neuhof, Merhoyed. Master Smill is in charge of Sir Hanush's stables. He's by far his best vassal. It's all a bit complicated for a newcomer, I suppose. This lord here, that lord there, this exemption here, that right there. Exemptions from exemptions, rights to half of something, so on. It'd take you a year to make head or tail of it. This tower was only half the size when I was a young lad. Sir Hanush had it extended and made into an armory.
God be with you, Benesh. How goes it? Well enough, Nightingale. It's quiet today. Good. Where's Moimir, anyway? Isn't he supposed to be here with you? Uh, yes. He hasn't turned up yet. Oh, I see. Now, where might he have got to, then? I don't know. You don't know, eh? Let me tell you something. When the bailiff finds out Moimir's slacking off, he'll be in serious shit. And being a friend of his, you wouldn't want that, would you? No. So it's better if I deal with it and we leave the bailiff out of it, right? Um, yes, I suppose so. So where is he? In the tavern. He was thirsty, so he... Went for a nail. We know how that goes. Come on, Henry. Let's go and find that idler, and you'd better talk some sense into him. here. I don't get it. Hmm. Maybe Captain Bernard called him away somewhere. What do I know? But you know what? Since we're here now... Come and sit with me, Henry. Let's have a drink. That fool got me all worked up. Shouldn't we be on patrol instead of drinking? You're eager, aren't you? Don't worry, even watchmen are entitled to a break. Except the ones on the gate and the tower, of course. But that's enough about that. Let's not let it spoil our day. Listen, since we're sitting here anyway, how about a little game? Why not? You're a brave soul taking me on. I'm not used to losing. Okay. Just one more thing and we're done for the night. 
bringing the end of the day and closing the taverns. Isn't it still a bit early? I don't know how it was in Scarlet's, but here in Rate we close up at this hour. Except, of course, during fairs and big festivals. Then we don't close at all. I see. Should I go and ring the bell? If you wouldn't mind. The bell is hanging outside the rat house. Ring three times, then go to the trader's tavern by the market square and make sure the innkeeper closes up. I'll do that. Before I forget, it's forbidden to walk in Rate at night without a torch. Here, take this one. And the canon of St. Wenceslas in Olomouc was so drunk, <laughs> he dragged the pig to the market square, saddled it up, <laughs> and rode it out of the town gate. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 we can, we can see. We can see that this wasn't going to end well. So, Sir Peter and I rode off, 
to look for the good cannon on his pig. <laughs> 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 Hey, two fine men. <laughs> We tracked the filthy beast down to a sty beyond Cronau. I mean, the beast with a tonsier on its head. <laughs> <laughs> we never found the real pig, but the Reverend was sound asleep in the pigsty. <laughs> <laughs> Birds of a feather stick together. <laughs> it seems the same goes for pigs and planets. <laughs> <laughs> toast, <gentlemen>, to toast, gentlemen, two pigs and planets. <laughs> God save the bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Sir so Hans, forgive my intrusion, but I need... Oh, but what? You uh, want to join us? Want to <laughs> buy us around? <laughs> I'm afraid we don't drink with peasants. You're not in your village now, boy. <laughs> No, sir. Curfew's been rung. The alehouse is closing. <laughs> Nothing closes while I'm sitting here. If that's all, you're dismissed. Are you out of your mind, lad? You can't cross his lordship. He's got a temper like a bear with gut egg. If I was you, I'd get lost before he shows it. The bailiff instructed me to close the tavern at the proper hour. He doesn't want anyone disturbing the peace after curfew. The bailiff? The bailiff can kiss my ass. I trust you haven't forgotten who's the rightful lord of Ratte. No, it's Sir Hannes. Oh, is he here? Or is he hiding under the table, maybe? <laughs> no, then what he wants isn't worth a fart in a bathhouse. And besides, he's only in charge till I grow up. Which clearly hasn't happened yet. Enough! You can't talk to me like that. I'm a nobleman! Come now, sirs. You're not going to fight here, are you? We most definitely are. This yokel needs to be taught his place.
Christ is happening here! Hell! Answer me, damn you! This peasant insulted me. I had to teach him a lesson. By rolling around in the mud like a hog? That's a fine example of noble conduct! Sir Hannes, the bailiff ordered me to close. Silence! You shut your mouth and thank your lucky stars that you are Radzig's ward. Have you gone out of your mind? Raising your hand to a nobleman? And you, Hans. How many times have I told you that drinking with your subjects might be good for their morale, but it's bad for your honor? <sighs> you spend all your days drinking and chasing wenches. Which wouldn't matter if you paid any attention at all to your duties. And now we see what that leads to. Tomorrow, you will go with me to a hearing. Some landowners will ask me to settle a dispute. It will be an excellent lesson for you. I had planned to go hunting, but if you think listening to the pointless gripes of a bunch of old fools will benefit me, so be it. Hunting? Well then, Your Grace, I'll tell you what, you can go hunting. Really? Naturally. Who am I to deprive the young Lord Capon of his sport? And you can take Henry here as your page. Absolutely not. You'll do as I've commanded. It's time you learned how to lead people, and not just in drinking and brawling. Now get out of my sight. Sir, I have responsibilities to the bailiff. Not I can't... Any Not anymore. Your responsibilities now are the Lord Capon. It's time you learned how to behave in the presence of nobility. Let's go. 
Tell the kitchen I'm hungry. It's been a long journey.